Hello there, beloved USU listeners. It's Julie, and uh, I'm really, really excited for this interview today. I met Asma years ago at an incredible personal development conference and then mastermind and just loved her energy and her story uh, blew me away. And I'm just so grateful, so grateful to have, to have Asma here today. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about her and then you'll get to meet her yourself. Asma Mikal is a connection catalyst, trainer, facilitator, business strategist, and an advocate of feminine leadership. We need that. She is passionate about helping women entrepreneurs and executives unlock their highest potential, activate their feminine power, and launch their dream business from their zone of genius so they can live a life of connectedness and fulfillment. Asma is known for her authenticity, passion, and engaging conversations. Her clients love her dynamic and depth expertise in business branding, design thinking, movement therapy, emotional intelligence, and appreciative inquiry. Asma is also the founder of Fire and Flow. All right, Asma, welcome, welcome, <laughs> welcome to the show. I'm so happy you're here. I'm so happy to be here as well. Hi, Julie. Hello, hello. This is like a uh, soul sister here. This is um, such a gift, so much fun. And I'm sorry if I said your, I realize I might have said your last name wrong, so I apologize. I know. I love how you said it. Now I want to call it like that in, you, in the future. How it do we say your name enough. so I can get it right next time and we don't know how to call you? It's Asma Metkal. Metcal. Okay. Yeah. Maybe you can share your story first. Um, the story of, you know, growing up in Morocco and what happened, how you got from there to here. I mean, it's a pretty incredible story. I think just for people to like get a sense of you and what you've had to go through to create what you have today. Of course. So yeah, so you know my story because we were on the same stage when I shared it. Um, so I was born in Morocco and uh, for a lot of people that don't know, Morocco is a beautiful, gorgeous country. Everybody should go there to visit it. It's so beautiful. Um, but during that time when I was there, which is 42 years ago, um, it was very male dominated, like in terms of the culture and the way things were. And so I remember having uh, done like my high school and I was ready and I told my dad, I wanna move to Canada or to France so I can finish my studies. And he was like, there's no way in hell you're gonna go anywhere until you have a diploma here. And so I had to stay because women cannot go anywhere on their own. And so I ended up staying and I finished uh, my uh, university degree. I was able to go through uh, this big training. Uh, there was like a contest that they do uh, throughout the whole Africa uh, so you can get in into this school which is called the School of Science and Information so you can become a librarian or an archivist and so I applied for it uh, because if you get in you'll get it for free and you can get all your studies done for free so I applied with 5,000 other people and I was able to get in and that was amazing. There was hundred of us and it was amazing with the different things that we've learned. It was just so incredible. And when I got my degree, I was in the top three, which was amazing. And so that opened the door for me to go and find different uh, type of work. But what I wanted to do is really to move. I didn't want to stay in Morocco because there were so many things there that really didn't connect with me. I didn't like how women were treated, how my dad, was with my mom. Uh, he was married to another woman. He only came visit us once or twice a week for not even an hour. So I didn't even know what it felt like to have a dad. Um, my girlfriend, they will have boyfriend. They will push them to have sex with them. And as soon as they do, they're like, oh, I'll have to leave you now because you're not a virgin. I can never marry you. And all of these little things, I was just like, what the hell is happening with this? This is not, I don't like this. And so I was like really building like this rage deep down in me, but I couldn't do anything because I was a woman. And so by the time I got my degree, uh, people were like, my, my mom and my dad, thank God, they were like more um, like open. They were like, you like, okay, now, now go and apply and hopefully you'll get like a scholarship so you can move to Canada. So I started applying and 
a lot of people were like, why don't you want to stay? And I just said, well, it's very simple. If I stayed in less than a year, I'll be married and I will be a stay home mom. And that's it. Like I won't have any career and nothing could work. And so I ended up applying and I got a scholarship that got me to move to Canada. And I moved to Canada in Montreal at the age of 21. So at 21, I already had a master's degree and I, I was there and I didn't know anyone and it was weird. Um, my family didn't know how they could support me. Uh, it was very expensive going from a deer home to Canadian. And all I wanted to do is just prove everybody wrong. I just wanted to show everybody that I can do it on my own and just go after what I needed to create. And so I did it. And it was a lot of hard work. Uh, my dad refused to pay for my studies. So I had to figure out on my own. Um, I was not allowed to work in Canada because I was not uh, like a resident. I was just an international student and all the international came before me and got all the job they can find on campus. So it was all this like hurdles after hurdles and challenges after challenges that I was just like, bring it on. Just, I will do it. I'm going to show you that I, I'm capable. I'm more than capable than a man. I will show you. And my dad was never the loving type. And so I always wanted to prove him that I'll be successful without him. And that was my way of like, like him loving me. So he was giving me tough love kind of. And so, so I was always just like striving to do that. And so, yeah. And you know what? I was very successful. I was in more in Montreal. I ended up working for an ad agency. They promoted me to be a director after three years. And I had an amazing life that I was able to build on my own in Canada. So that was like my story that got me from a very early age until there. And then I moved again to Victoria to follow my heart and follow a man. Um, and that didn't work out. And so I had to go again and recreate it all over again. And so I am proud to say that my superpower is being able to take big risks and also always figure it out. Like there was always a way, like a figure outable, like our beautiful Marifolio says, you will always figure it out. And so I will always go and do it. And so that really built a very strong resilience within me. And that also showed me that I am not afraid of a black canvas. So mm -hmm. give me any black canvas and I'm open to restart all over again. And I will put like throw like yellow and purple in it. And like, even if it's a black canvas, I'm gonna still make it the most beautiful canvas and imaginable because I will always gonna see the beauty that it's out there and I will create what I always wanted to create within myself. Wow, okay, that's, that is so that's a really powerful story. And um, it's amazing because, you know, you're saying it now and it's like already happened, but I can only imagine when you were in, you know, moving, all you knew was Morocco to move to Canada without support. I mean, part of me is like, what was day four and five and 22 like when you were there? You know, like when you're there with like, what, what am I doing? I mean, I've had a very small experience of that. Um, and I'm even thinking, you know, people that are listening, it's like really stopping and thinking. I love that you said what your superpower is. And I thought that was a great reminder to not be afraid of the blank canvas. Um, and with what's going on even right now, I think for many people, it's a blank canvas time. It might be like, you know, what might want to be let go and reborn and what wants to be birthed at this point. And what a great knowing to have that you can handle anything. Mm -hmm. And it only happens through life experience. Right. right. And so I am very thankful to my dad for all those experiences. Mm -hmm. And like my spiritual coach will say, you chose him as your dad. He just played a role so you can be who you are today. And mm -hmm. so it was a lot of healing <laughs> for me to get there. Yeah. But I am there now. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, they like that fire within me would not have happened mm -hmm. if my dad was not acting the way he did. And if I didn't have those experiences that I did, like I remember being in Montreal and being surrounded by men from Morocco. And after a month, they're like, I don't like this. I'm leaving. I, I like women don't look at me here. 
because I don't have a car. And even if I drive a nice car, they don't care. And I don't have like somebody who's going to take care of my laundry and stuff because they're so used to that in Morocco. Yeah. And so they came to Canada and they're just a man. They're not like their status didn't follow them. And so for me, I'm like, yes, finally. Right. Like I'm happy. And that is every, free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where yeah. others are like, oh, I hate this. I don't like this. I'm not getting the value. Or I'm not getting like that match. Like, like I don't know, like celebrity status or whatever that I get in. So yeah, it was very interesting to see how a country and the culture scape that we grow in, like really builds that ego and all your the decision that you make and everything that represents who you are and your value and your own validation and your worth yeah. is really impregnated within you from the culture that you were born into. And so when you leave that and you travel around the world, that's why I love when people say, I backpack, perfect, because that's the best way to learn who you are and also look at your culture and your religion and everything from this critical mind, which is very different because now you're open to different experiences, right? And so, yeah. yeah. I wanna go back to, you, you kind of alluded to this, that um, just what you were raised around was really like a stifling of anything of the, the feminine, anything feminine, forget feminine leadership. Like it's, feminine <laughs> yes. I mean, it, yeah, it doesn't sound like, especially if there's, uh, you know, marrying multiple women and, you know, it, it, it didn't really, uh, it doesn't sound like at least then the culture did a whole lot to uplift women. And I know that's, that's emerged as something important for you. And that's an area I think we both really, I mean, there's so many things I love what you're doing, but especially this rise of feminine power and connecting to that feminine, um, power within you. And, and of course, you know, both, men, women, everything in between. We have both energies, but especially mm -hmm. for women, I think there is something about connecting to that. Can you say a little more about your own journey? Because I know you've gone through quite a journey of letting go of maybe some of the ways that you worked and did life and then bringing in you know, more of that flow and feminine. Of course. Um, yeah. So I came to Victoria in BC in Canada and I launched my own marketing branding agency and I was very successful at it. I was making a lot of money. I was hiring 40, 50 different subcontractors working on big projects. And one day I was just sitting there and I was like, oh my God, this is everything I asked for. This is everything I always, I always dreamed about leading a company and having 50 people. That's always been my dream when I was in Morocco and when I came to Mon Montreal. Yeah. And then I was just sitting there and I was like, but why I'm not smiling? as much as I used to. Mm -hmm. And um, what is that emptiness inside? Um, what, what, what else is out there? And I start putting myself on dating sites and stuff like that. So I could just so like, okay, you did this now next, right? So it's like, what is that next piece that is missing, right? And I was like, no, 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 it has nothing to do with dating or anything. Like, what is it about what I'm doing right now that is not working for, out for me? And I remember um, coming back from best year ever and the go abundance women. And I was leading or facilitating four or five events in a row and it was Christmas time and I was finally home and my marketing agency was so crazy busy. And I remember like being at home with four infections at once during Christmas, I couldn't hear, I couldn't smell, I couldn't eat. It was just like this, I don't know how I ended up getting all those. And then I was just sitting there and I was like, what was all this for? Yeah. And I was like, right now, at starting this moment, I am done. Something has to change right now. I don't know what it is, but something has to change. And as soon as I heard that, like first thing that said, okay, 2019, radical self-care. Like literally, that's all I want. Radical self-care, me first, like me first. And I never thought about it that way ever before because I was always wanted to prove everybody wrong. And then after that, when I had the money, I was helping with my mom and my brother, like always doing it for mm -hmm. others and for my clients or for my employees or my subcontractors. It was always others, 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 and not me. Yeah. And so I chose in 2019 to slow down. So I chose to do that and reevaluate everything. And you know, Julie, when, when you, the moment you make that decision, that's when those huge contracts you worked on for two years, knock on your door, like here's hundred grand. Do you want them now? Can you come and do my marketing projects? And I'm like, no, I just said, I don't want to do that anymore. And I want to discover myself. So I have to say no. And another one came and I said, 
no and so it was so wow. interesting <laughs> that like the universe is just like dandling the carrot like are you still are you sure you want to slow down because here is more money here's more things right wow. and I remember our conversation so I remember yeah. having a conversation with you in February or March yeah and we talked about Mama Gina and we talked about the book Pussy and you were like, yeah, go and listen to it and, and read it. And Asma, I have this image of you where you're more flowy and I'm like, what are you talking about? And yeah. that was it. And we had, it was a quick conversation we, and that's it. So that stuck with me. I start listening to the book and me slowing down and me saying no to things that I was feeling, I was only wanted to prove myself versus like, discovering myself I said no to I decided to go to my favorite city San Diego and I decided to go and stay there for a month and I went there and I was working with two spiritual coaches and out at the same time and now all I was doing was healing I was just going deep within and just healing and healing and what came out very strongly is deep deep down within me and within my heart I am very very feminine mm -hmm. that my heart was just like surrounded with this huge big wall mm -hmm. that was protected from my dad and from the culture and that I was born into being in Montreal and in Canada like wanted to prove myself to others and show them that I can do it on my own and so like I just protected my heart but then slowly I start removing it and I was like oh my god my heart is so beautiful my softness is gorgeous I can be powerful in my own softness and the things I was doing on my own, hidden, like dancing, I started dancing in a woman mastermind. And the John, the main facilitator, asked me, go on the stage and just like lead this dance to everybody. I was like, are you serious? I, okay. And I did it. And all the women came to me at the end, like, oh my God, that was so beautiful. Can you teach me that? I felt connected to myself. I felt connected to my sensuality and to my own beauty, just following what you were doing. And then I was like, what is happening? Mm. And what I realized is I was uncovering yeah. what was already within me, like all that flow and that femininity. And because I slowed down, I gave it the space to, to rise and to show up for me and me starting to connect more to my own intuition and connect more to that beautiful feminine energy and sensuality and softness and re allowing myself to receive, right? And so that was the big shift because I was always giving. And then somebody told me, well, maybe you're always giving because you don't allow others to give you. So you're not allowing, other, you're not allowing yourself to receive. And I was like, oh my God, you're right. Mm -hmm. And so like also like opening my heart to receive that. And since I did that, I started receiving little, little by little. And you're like, and you start noticing it. So literally I had every night in my journal, what did I receive today? Even if it's a smile or a thank you or gratitude, like anything to mm -hmm. just yeah. remind myself that I can receive. So it was this small little shift that started happen. And the more I was shifting and connecting more to my feminine, the more I was discovering who I was truly, my essence. Yeah. My essence is heart, my essence is passion. And so that's when fire and flow came in. Fire, fire is that passion and it's like taking action and like not being afraid of the white canvas and going after it. But there's also that flow that was always there, which is surrender and let go and trust. Mm -hmm. And the big lesson for me in that, in that journey of that specific year was like, I am not alone. I am supported and there is a divine support that I never gave a space for it because I didn't, I was too much in my masculine. I was like, only people who are around you can help you and not trust people. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, 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 there's trust is part of the feminine and there is divine support. You are never alone. Like listen to your own intuition. Intuition are messages that are coming from beyond and from your own um, like protectors and angels and ancestors. And, and yeah, so, as you can see, it was this, the gift I gave myself is to slow down. And now I feel like the world has been given that same gift this time. Mm -hmm. It's more like a forced gift. <laughs> like, yeah. here we go. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's beautiful what's on the other side if people allow to take that journey. Wow, Asma. I, um, I love, I love your 
first of all, thank you for sharing that so authentically. And it's really, it's been beautiful to watch it and to observe you. It's like a flower kind of like opening up. Um, and I'd love to, I'd love to go into intuition. Yeah. I'd love to go into intuition with you and really talk about, cause it's something I'm really, I'm just so curious and interested and intrigued by, it because I do, we all have it. It comes in different, you know, everyone senses, feels, sees, hears it in our own unique way. Um, was it something that you feel like you always had, but you didn't listen to? Do you feel like it got amplified as you started to give yourself time to heal? Like, tell us a little bit about your intuition journey and how you've, how you've learned to uncover it and tap into it. <laughs> Happily. Um, it was always there. Just never listened to it or mm -hmm. I was never able to translate it. And to give you a very simple example, I remember before I will go on a date with a guy and then be sick the following day and I will never know why. And I'll be, oh, I'm just sick and that's it. And then I remember dating one guy in particular. I didn't want to go on a second day with him at all. But my friends were like, hey, Asma, come on. You've been single for a year. You're too difficult. Just give the guy a chance. And I went with him and I really was not talking. I was just like all shut down the whole time. And then I went home and I ended up being sick for a week and the doctors didn't know what I had. And I ended up dating the guy and I think that's why I got so sick. And again, no idea. And I, that relationship, I'd even have been the worst relationship I've been into. Uh, mm -hmm. I healed from it and everything, but like the, 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 word abuse and all of that like was the only time I ever had that and it was really bad and it was an older guy than my age and so it was so many things that like yeah. the red flags were there my body was literally screaming at me this guy is gonna drain you from everything mm -hmm. step away and I was like oh I'm very weak I don't know why I'm always sick like that's what I thought and so I totally forgot about all of that Right. completely and then I go into this journey and then I tell myself after talking to you and all of that I was and I I know that your work on intuition and and then I was like and and talking to Sharissa as well and she was like yeah I'll give yourself like one minute to two minutes a day and just like listen to your intuition and be like what do I want right now or what do I want to hear so and I just start doing that slowly so I had my little singing bowl and it was like heart uh, chakra one and I will just do the single and I'll set an, inti an, uh, an intention and I'll do my single bowl for not even like 10 seconds and literally the answer will come and I'll just be like whoa like I'll remember saying to myself I need to hire a project manager to manage my marketing agency and I literally did the singing bowl and the first thing that came out was like uh, lean stay lean and I was like, whoa, okay, then you do not hire anybody stay lean right I was like oh what is that so I was I was like oh okay but like the more I start doing it now, oh my God, the, the it's just this little voice of wisdom just just tell you something. It's so clear. I remember wanting to connect with a client of mine for a while and every time she was never available. And I was like, yeah, okay, one day when she's ready, like around this week, I'll connect with her. And I was literally doing something completely different. Something in me just said, call this person right now. And I literally took my phone, called her and she's like, how were you able to get, I was literally came to the office for literally 30 seconds. I was going to leave and you called at exact the moment. And yeah, I have time. We can talk. And I was like, deep down, I was like, I know, <laughs> right? And so it was just tiny little uh, intuitions. But right now, I... I would literally ask a question, I will get an answer. And, and, and that's what I find like sometimes I tell people, we are really magical beings. Like any question you have, you'll, the answer will come to you. You just need to learn how to listen or to let go so you can listen to, so it's not the ego talking, but it's like truly your intuition. And so I always tell people, it's that little whisper that talks to you. If it's loud, that's yeah. your ego. But it's that it's like little whisper. It's exactly, it's something within yourself uh, saying it. And I really, right now I really hear it. And I learned lately um, that whatever we feel in our body is literal. Yeah. And I didn't know that. I knew that the body is giving us messages. We have body wisdom. But like when they say it's literal, it's literal. So if you feel like you need to go and meet with someone and you feel like you want to throw up, you don't feel good, well, don't go. Like your body's literally just told you like, stay away. Right. And, 
And so it, it, it really worked for me well. And even now in my business and communities I am part of and everything, like I, I really connect deeply to my body. And I feel like if my heart is opening up or it's closing, if I'm stomach ache or I'm having butterflies, if I'm having a big smile on my face when I'm connecting with a friend or soul sister, or like I'm like feeling like stepping away like this and just staying here, you know, like there's so many little things that between our intuition and our body wisdom, like it's a whole book <laughs> that is like available to us, right? <laughs> yeah, so so for me, yeah, it's just little whispers um, that that I just, uh, I know I have friends and we know Francis and like that they can see angels and things like I don't see shapes or, but it's just that little whisper. And when I ask a question, I have an answer, yeah. Wow. So it sounds like you hear it. It's an audible, small whisper. You hear it, you hear the voice or sense. I kind of, yeah. Or it's like, you know, like that, a definite knowing, like, it's like, it's been there the whole time. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, it's like you just accessed it. Right. So sometimes you feel like a whisper or sometimes like, oh, it's like, I always knew this. Yeah. So it's always been somewhere in my brain. Yeah. And like, like the door open to just like, hey, here's the reminder and off I go, do whatever you want with it, right? Because you, you always have the power of choice. But like, here's my little wisdom yeah. and you choose. I love that, you know, I love what you just said. And it reminds me like this, you know, we have free will um, and it's kind of like, it's always there. It's like knocking on the door to share information and wisdom. Are we listening? Are we in tune? Are we in alignment? And what I'm hearing from you, and actually, to be honest, observed with you, like was watching you fine tune your own self to, you could call it your higher self, your inner guide, your highest version of yourself. But I, I have watched that and I, I, in experiencing this myself and what I'm listening and hearing from you is that when you do that, things become, there's more flow, more ease. And it's, it, it there's a general, um, there, you don't have to push as hard. It's, it's easier. It really is. You're not going against anything. You're, you're going with your heart. It is so true. One of the advice that really shook me three years ago when I was still in my masculine uh, from one of the coaches. He's like, you know what, Asma? You are very comfortable in struggle. Mm. Very comfortable. That's your comfort zone. So what I want you to do now is I want you to go to ease. I was like, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) There's no way. Like, what do you mean ease? What, what, What is easy? Like, like, I was just like, are you kidding me? Like, did I pay for this? Like, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah. So I was not able to say, are you kidding me? Like, I worked hard to get where I'm at. I needed to prove everybody wrong. <laughs> like, I was fighting for my dad's love. I was doing all of this thing. And you were telling me that this is my comfort zone, that I want to be here. Like, I was just like, it was so interesting seeing my reaction and now, like, reflecting back on, on it. Because it is so true right now. It is flow. It is ease. I, there is, there is free will. There is a choice. I, I attract my clients. I, I they're magnetized into my life. They bring me as much as I bring back to them. I do what I love because now I know that my energy in, introduces me before I show up. Uh, if I send an email, my energy will be in it. If I write and create a program or a coaching or I'm coaching, like that will show. Like there is something. W- beyond just our ego the words that we say it's our energy and everything who we are like that 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 brings us there right so once you are in that place and when you are in that balance of your fire where you're taking action you're going after what you want you are confident you are at the same time you are trusting and you're letting go and you're surrendering to a bigger power stronger power while at the same time like being in ease and in the flow and having that beautiful peace of mind with it within you i i find like that's the most that's the ultimate definition of success that's the ultimate definition of wealth is when you are able to get into that space and it starts by going within and mm-hmm. a lot of people struggle with that because we have been brought into needing external from everything in order for us to survive we need external and so we are going like this way versus go from here and then whoever who is in here 
in this vibration with you or is going to come and is going to see your open arms because you're like, if you are here versus, oh, either come and or like go if we are not like vibing, if we're not in the same, you know what I mean? I love it. I love what you just said about the ultimate expression of wealth. You said something like is being comfortable going within. It's it's comfortable with yourself. It's I love that that way of looking at it. Um, it, it I love that. It's like you know that in itself. That being able to to listen to that inner to your inner voice and to honor that. That's really that. It takes courage and and when you're there, that's the place where we get in alignment with you know, our USU, you, best self, higher self, whatever you want to call it. And even like, I feel like the first step is awareness yeah. because I was leading my life being successful and, and miserable, but I was like, oh, that's the price of success. That's okay. Right. Like yeah. I was not, nobody like challenged me on it until I went to my first spiritual training. And, and then somebody said to me, why are you play? Why are you playing a role? And I'm like, what do you mean I'm playing a role? Like, yeah, like you said, every time I talk to you, I talk about marketing. I'm like, yeah, because I'm like helping you. I was like, uh, yeah, but I don't want to help me with my business now. I want to get to know you. Who are you? And I was literally like, uh, what do you mean? Who am I? I'm like, yeah, who are you? What is your favorite movie? And I promise you, Julie, I didn't have an answer. Wow. And I was like, Whoa, what's happening? And yeah. and like, and he was like what's happening? And I was like, I don't know. It's like, well, you're playing a role. Can you please take off your mask so I can see what's inside? And, and I was just like, I don't know what you're talking about. So it was a five day training. So I heard that in the second day. Yeah. And after that, throughout that day, like a week, I was like slowly like removing because I was seeing other people vulnerable and open. And when somebody shared their story and you start crying, you are in a way a little bit healing yourself through what they are sharing because you connect it to something within themselves. So I started doing a little bit of healing. And then from there, I was like, I will go and meet people and I will not talk about business. And then people will be like, oh my God, Asma, you're so funny. I'm like, what am I? Like, I was just like, I was starting to rediscover who I am because yeah. I was playing a role. I was like, I'm this business boss lady. I need to show everybody can do it. I will go to the office like angry and be like, Shay, I can do this. Like I look young, but I'm not young. I have experience. I can like do this million dollar deal and all of that. Right. And so it was just so interesting reconnecting back and be like, oh, this is who I am deep down. And people are appreciating who I am. Right. The more I'm discovering who I am the more I'm able to show more to people. Yeah. So it start. so I can, I called myself a connection catalyst for a reason. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. connection to me matters so much. Yeah. And it happened like last September when my longest, oldest friend, uh, since I knew her since we were 14 died. And I learned that scrolling Facebook of everything. Oh and I was in this deep pain at home alone and I send this cry on Instagram and all I got was likes or sorry for your loss but nobody called nobody checked up on me like nothing and I'm just like wait I have 1500 friends on Facebook I have this amazing people following me and like mm -hmm. nobody like just called me mm -hmm. just to hear my voice and I was so hurt and so alone and so grieving and then my first video ever, like I did on Instagram about connection. And I just said, why connection matters. Yeah. And I just talked about how, why did we forget how to connect with each other? Mm -hmm. And now of course with COVID-19, that's the big lesson of all. Yeah. Now, you, I love to hug, you love to hug. Now yeah. it's like, what? It's gonna be physical distancing? This is not gonna work. Like yeah. this is impossible, right? And so for me, I see connection in three levels, like connection with self, it starts with us, like connecting with who yeah. you are and discovering who you are. It is connection with someone else, with others. So that's when your emotional intelligence and everything you worked within yourself to like be able like to connect with another person authentically through appreciation and having these difficult conversations together, but still from this place of love. And then it's connection with the divine, right? Because there's always something bigger than us. So like, that's why I consider it. And that's why it always starts with knowing who we are and having that awareness because once people have that awareness right. like they are able then to ask the right questions that will lead them towards the answers that they're looking for within within themselves through their own intuition or the universe will bring the right people into their network that will help them get the answer 
Beautiful. Asma. I, um, thank you for just, just really sharing from your heart. Uh, there's so much here to take away. One of the main things I got is, you know, we're not our identity, even when we have boss lady, or I'm a marketing executive or whatever, mom or this, or whatever we think of as our identity, that, that is never the true essence of who we are. And so whatever that might be, because some might have a different story, right? Like mine was people pleaser. I mean, I just, I, goodness, I'm like harmony, people getting along is like my middle name. I just, I enjoy that. But I did it to a detriment where I wouldn't speak my mind and I, you know, it, it, it didn't work. And so all of those identities, like, I think part of what you're saying is like letting that, whatever that identity, let it, let it go, let it go. So what can emerge is really your, your essence. And it's so beautiful. It's been amazing to watch you just to blossom. And um, we will definitely have all your information about fire and flow, what you do. Before we wrap, is there any, I always like to ask if maybe there's a heart flare, something that you want to share before we end, like a words of wisdom, a favorite quote, like anything that you didn't get to say yet, you're like, oh, I got to say that intuitively <laughs> what's coming up for you. <laughs> intuitively, um, I invite people to connect to their feminine power within themselves. Like go find that soft space, that creative space, that pleasure place. Like I, I heard something this morning that just confirmed this quote that I love, take your pleasure seriously, especially mm -hmm. during this time. Yeah. It's so, so important. And so, and that's for me, like, that's one of the steps to get into your feminine power is to have that little pleasure every day. Mama Gina talks a lot about that as well. Yeah. And so for me during this time, more than anything, and even, even if the new normal happens, like pleasure is so important. It's that little thing you could do for yourself to connect with yourself and just be in this beautiful state of bliss and, and, and know what that is and what that feels like. And when you have that little pleasure, whether like you're having your little chocolate or your glass of wine, anything, just slow down and just enjoy it. And just like, let that moment of bliss like last as long as it can, because the more you can connect to that emotion and to that feeling, you'll be able to bring it back faster because you are learning slowly to connect with yourself. So beautiful. And I know we'll have this in the show notes that you have a really lovely book to give away called The Rise of Feminine Power. It's a beautiful giveaway. And we will have all that information because um, that is so kind of you. And for those that are like, I would like to understand how to do that a little bit more, you have that information, which is awesome. So thank <laughs> you. Do. Thank you, Asma. Well, you are one beautiful, bright soul. And I'm really, I'm so glad to have had you today. It's such a gift. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed it.